Thank you so much. Audrey, thank you so much. I want to I thank you for allowing me to share the stage with you and for allowing me a few minutes to talk to the Sistering family um, about overcoming challenges, which is something I find that we all have. We all have challenges. How many of you have ever had a setback or a hardship or a tragedy that has stopped you from moving forward? Thank you. Well, I know something about hardship. I've had an intimate relationship with hardship for the last 18 months to two years. You see, within the scope of just five months, I found myself unexpectedly pregnant with twins, and I already had two kids at that point. My husband left me over my decision to keep the twins, and because of the stress of that entire situation, I ended up on bed rest in the hospital for five weeks, and I could only go from the bed to the bathroom and back. And at the end of that period of time, my twins were born extremely prematurely. My daughter was born at one pound, 12 ounces, and my son was born at one pound, 13 ounces. And they were, their lives were really hanging in the lurch. My daughter spent four months in the intensive care unit, and my son was hospitalized for 18 months. They're 19 months old. He literally just came home a few months ago. And people say to me all the time, how do you? Why don't you? Why aren't you? How can I do what you do? And the first thing I tell them is that I'm extremely grateful for everything that's happened to me. I thank God every day for my experiences because it's made me a different person and it's made me a better person. And I also tell them that, you know what, this is just a point in time. You're not going to be here in a month, in a week. You're not going to be here five minutes from now. This is just a point in time and this will pass. Dr. Althea Massey says that your circumstances are not your conclusion. You're not, wherever you are right now is not where you're going to be, and where you are today is not where you're supposed to be. And I, that really helped me get through the last 18 months. You know, the other thing I tell people is that we're supposed to take hits. Life is not supposed to be all easy. So, you know, I've been boxing. I've been boxing for about four years now. And as a boxer, I realized that boxing has so many similarities to life. So I remember the first time I went to the gym, I worked out in this gym. It was old school, you know, spit on the floor, sweaty, all guys. I was the only woman in there. And I walked in and I was like, what am I doing? Am I crazy? Everybody stopped. It was like in Rocky, that scene where he walks into that gym in the hood and everybody stops. That was me. Everybody stopped. And my trainer said, come on, you got to get in the ring. I was like, no, that's all right. Let's just be over here where nobody could see me. He said, no. You got to get in the ring. So I got in the ring, and I held on to the ropes. I stayed in that corner. And he said, Tammy, you have to get off the ropes. And I realized how much boxing is like life. In order to, in order to participate in it, you need to get in the ring and get off the ropes. So I finally did get off the ropes, and I got hit, and I got hit hard, and I hated it. And the first time I got hit, I hit the canvas. And it's not like in the movies where like you hit, ow, and you get up. I mean, I hit hard and I said, oh, it's nice to be down here. I liked being on the canvas. And as they're counting me out, one, two, three, I had these thoughts going through my head, which basically said, it's nice down here. I'm not in pain. I'm not afraid. Nobody's trying to beat me up. I'm just going to stay here until they finish counting. Five, six. Seven, and when he got to seven, something in me switched on. And I said, you know what, there's more in me. I have more in me, and I know that you have more in you. And I got up, and I got hit again, and I went down again. Yeah, I wasn't a great boxer, I kept forgetting to put my hands up. But I did, I went down again, but I got up a little faster that time. I got up on three, didn't take me until seven. And I got hit again. And the last time I got hit, I didn't go down. My knees wobbled, but I didn't go down. And what people don't realize, it's not about the hits. We're supposed to take hits. It's about how often you get up from those hits. And it doesn't matter how long it takes, as long as you get up or as long as you're trying to get up. And people have said, you know, Tammy, how much more can one woman take? I mean, I can tell you stories. I lost both of my grandmothers during that period of time. I had to put my dog to sleep. I mean, it was like one thing after another. And I know people were looking at me going, when is she going to fall over? How much more can one woman take? And I believe, you know, when I look back at that period of time, because by the way, I'm not there anymore, 
when I look back at that period of time, I know that one of the reasons that I was able to get up from so much was because I was so clear about the person I wanted to become. And I was so clear that I didn't want to be defined as a woman who had twins in the intensive care unit whose husband left her. I didn't want to be all that. I wanted to be something more than that. And when you become very clear about your vision and you become very clear about your purpose, the universe begins to realign situations and opportunities appear. And your path becomes very, very clear. And that's what happened to me and that's what I experienced. And I tell people, be clear about who you want to become, not who you are right now. So I was so focused on where I wanted to go that as these things kept happening, I just became very curious. Huh, I wonder why my dog got sick just at this very moment. And what does that mean? And how, how am I supposed to respond to that? So I always tell people, part of your getting through your struggle and part of getting through your challenges is being clear about who you want to be on the other side. And the last thing I tell people is that you have to be committed to your journey. Whatever's happening to you is supposed to be happening to you. You can't short circuit it. You can't circumvent it. No one else can walk your path for you. You have to be committed to your journey. And when I talk about commitment, commitment to me means that you are taking action at 100% consistently despite the fact that you don't know the outcome. Despite all of the uncertainty and all the impossibility of your situation, you're still committed to forward action. And when you're committed, again, you begin to move through your challenges. Why do we hold back? Why do people hold back on themselves? You know, I saw this movie. It's one of my favorite movies, and not many people have seen it. It's called Gattaca. And this is a futuristic movie, and it's a movie about two brothers. One brother is born what they call normal, just the way we're born. Nine months, you come out, bang, you are what you are. The other brother was genetically engineered to be a far superior human being. Not just superior to his brother, but to anybody. Superior intelligence, stronger, smarter, faster, um, you, better looking, didn't need glasses, you named it. They biogenetically engineered this other brother so that he would be better than everybody else. So these two brothers grew up together and they play this game. And what they do is they go down to this beach and they run into the water and they swim as hard and fast as they possibly can until one gets tired or scared and wants to turn back. So they play this game their entire lives and the stronger brother always wins, always wins. And there's one day that comes where the weaker brother is keeping up with the stronger brother. And the harder and faster the stronger brother swims, the weaker brother is right there at his shoulder. And it gets to a point where the weaker brother passes him. And the weaker brother is swimming and swimming and the stronger brother begins to struggle and he starts to drown. And the weaker brother has to come back and get him and he brings him back to shore and they're both laying on the beach. They're out of breath and you can see the ocean and it's pitch black. And the stronger brother says, I don't understand. I'm the stronger brother. I'm the better man. How did you beat me? And the weaker brother says, I never saved anything for the swim back. I never saved anything for the swim back. He gave everything he had. He risked it all. He overcame fear. He swam as hard and as fast as he could, despite the fact he might not have enough energy to get back. Why do we want to go backwards, though? Why do we hold back? We should leave it all on the table. We should put it all out there. So when I talk about being committed to your journey, put it out there. As I went through what I went through, I realized I don't need to save anything for the swim back. This is me. I'm, I've already been there. I want to go here. I want to keep going forward. So be committed to your journey. Every challenge you have, every obstacle you face, move past it. Grow through it. Don't just go through it. Grow through it. And I'm going to leave you with that. And I, and I want to, again, I want to thank um, Audrey Bell Kearney for her, for her opportunity to speak to the Sistering family. And I want to thank all of you very much. Good night. <laughs>